This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP buzz chat, and I'm excited to uh, to get in and talk to to a brand new Azure MVP, Matthew. So, Matthew, welcome. Hey, Christian, thanks for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Well, thanks. for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Okay, uh, so my name is Matthew Brown. I'm a cybersecurity administrator for a company called NTES in County Limerick in Ireland. And I was awarded the MVP in, a, in the Azure category. And how long ago did that happen? Uh, that only happened yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> Whoa. So you see how I'm on top of these things, people, you know? <laughs> no, it's it, it's kind of funny. We were just talking briefly about this, but, like, but I just kind of monitor LinkedIn and and see through friends of friends and who do I know and uh, you know, but uh, and, and I try I try to get a mix of people that have been in the program for a long time and brand spanking new MVPs. So congratulations! It's very Thanks exciting. For you, I still remember. Yeah, so that's very exciting. So why don't you tell us? Um, so kind of what was your journey to becoming an M MVP? Did, did you was it a focused path? Was it intentional or was it kind of no, out of the blue? No. It, it was out of the blue. I was actually, so my MVP journey, so my tech journey started about 10 years ago originally. Um, so I've been, I've been about a decade in the tech sector, um, working help desk, uh, support, on-site, um, remote, everything. So I suppose in the last two years, I've been predominantly a lot online and, you know, connecting in with people. Um, when I when I got certified as a Microsoft certified professional, I kind of opened up doors that I never thought it would. Um, so I connected with people on. I got into LinkedIn again, and I connected with people. And one of the one of the individuals I was connected with, his name was Dan Ray. Uh, he's an MVP in the US for mm -hmm. the Microsoft Teams category. Um, I saw his stuff on LinkedIn and it was really interesting and I had no interest in teams whatsoever, but it was really interesting and just the funny aspects he had in the videos, his, I suppose his whole personality was jolly, it was upbeat. So I connected with Dan um, and I was in London at the time and I said to Dan, uh, look, I'd love to get involved with you, start something up. And he was like, have you ever heard of MVP? And I was like, no, no, never heard of it. And he said, how long have you been in tech? And I said, 10 years now. And he said, have you been online much? No, no. Uh, I said, I only started with LinkedIn again the last few, the last few years. How okay, can you be in Matt... tech and not be online, Matthew? <laughs> like, I don't yeah. understand. That doesn't equate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so I, I was online, but I was on the wrong things. I was getting my profile set up with Microsoft, CompTIA, other, other providers, but I wasn't getting involved in the communities enough. So when I met Dan online, uh, I started to get involved. We started our new Journey to the Cloud webinar series, and it just, it hit off from there, uh, Christian. Like, we broke our restream limit after two months which was amazing. Um, Dan decided he would nominate me in the Microsoft Azure category. He had seen my work with my certifications, uh, mentoring people through the BCS, which is the British Computer Society and the Irish Computer Society within Ireland and the UK. And then I suppose I branched out from there with Dan uh, to the US, Canada, Switzerland, Basically, anybody that would have us, um, we got involved in Tech Day Pakistan, um, meeting the Microsoft team in Microsoft One Place in Dublin, uh, reaching out to Linda in the garage. Um, Claire Smith was, she was the rock behind it all. She just pushed, um, she pushed everything for me over the last two years. She she really supported everything I did and she showed me where I went wrong and how I could improve. So I, 
kudos to Claire. She does an unbelievable job that no one ever hears of. To manage the amount of MVPs in the UK and Ireland is a tough job. So yeah. well yeah. done to her. Well, you just you just named off three really important things for anybody that's interested in becoming an MVP. I think it's it's great. I see these patterns again and again. But you know, um, one first foremost, like partnering with an existing MVP and creating new content. You know, there, there's that's a great way. If you know somebody or friends with an MVP or become you know connected to them and have ideas and say, hey, would you like to do this together? That's a great way to get your 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 toes dipped in the pool into becoming an MVP. Second thing was starting to do more you know, uh, community events, especially international with so much during the pandemic that moved to virtual. There are so many opportunities. Like we're always looking for speakers in Utah, for example, for the user group here, you know? Um, but then third, finding mentors, especially if you can find a Microsoft person to be a mentor to give you the good and the, and the bad about the things that you're doing out in the community, in the space. Those are the, some of the three most important steps it, for those that are interested in becoming MVP. So I, 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 suppose, I suppose the biggest thing, and I just want to say it because I, I know a lot of people watch your show, Christian. Um, Claire Smith, uh, Lorraine Lawrence, and Christian Begra were three of the most inspirational people in my Microsoft journey over the last few years in general, both online and offline and behind the scenes. And I just want to give a shout out to them. Um, without Lorraine, uh, I, I don't know if I'd be where I am today. And the same with Christian Fegra. Both of them are uh, sen senior, uh, senior uh, managers in Microsoft. And obviously Claire Smith is the R&D for the MVP program in Ireland and the UK. So just a real shout out to all three of them and thanking them for their continued support of the last two years. That's great. Yeah. And it's a, I know that the, the, the process is of becoming an MVP. It, it, it's kind of a black box, you know, where yeah. there's things that we can do and there's a lot of good people doing fantastic things out in the community that never get that recognition. So part of it is, is getting the visibility into Microsoft people and other MVPs. That's a key part of that. So I think you can be strategic, you know, in, in connections that you make, but it comes down to the same thing, like doing the work, give it back to the community, create the content. I, sp I suppose as you just on that, um, doing the work, doing the work is great, but the biggest thing to remember, I suppose, for aspiring MVPs is doing the work regardless of recognition is really important in the MVP yes. space. It's, it's like, to be seen to be doing something is never good, both in your job and with MVP. What you want is to be seen to be doing it, but to be really enjoying what you're actually doing. To love what you do is the most important thing about the MVP program. And for anyone looking to go down that route, just do what you do, love what you do, show the show the support for younger generations, older generations, get people who aren't necessarily tech savvy started in tech and um, yeah. there's with microsoft learn there's so many paths and nobody needs to be an expert in anything so you can start from the very basics and work your way up and that's what that's what i did i yeah. started it, with my fundamentals it, it's it's so the point is authenticity yeah it, it be, people yeah. see through it they i mean they know if there's look and i know again some good people but they're pushing so hard with that goal to become MVPs and everybody like calls them on it. It's like, it's like, yeah, but what it, it doesn't quite fit. You're doing it for the purpose of the goal rather than because of who you are and give it back to the community. Mm -hmm. a, a common refrain from M of MVPs is that, look, I would, and I say this all the time, I would be doing the same stuff I'm doing today regardless of the MVP. I was doing it before for years. I was doing it before and yeah. I'll do it after I'm an MVP. Although that's, I'd, I'd like to hit the 25 mark. I'm just saying. For <laughs> I, I think, I think that is every MVP's aspiration to get to yeah. that mark because it, it, look, it just shows you're dedicated to the communities. You have an in-depth knowledge of what you do. You're sharing that knowledge with generations of tech professionals that, might not necessarily do the same stuff as you do, but might inspire them to be better at what they're actually doing. 
So that's yeah, twenty five years, Christian. I I can't wait to see it. I've got a couple friends. I, I look forward to it. A good friend, you know, Hal Hostetler, uh, that I do AMA panels all the time with, and he just had his twenty five year. I, I just I I can't fathom that, but uh, you know, but uh, uh, you know, that's dipping into my retirement time frame. So yeah, uh, but anyway. Uh, you know, it's, uh, so what else, what are you passionate about right now? I mean, what, what is going on? Like, and, well, let me ask you first, what is your focus in Azure specifically? And then what are your passions within that space? Okay. So I suppose my focus is, uh, Azure AD connect surprisingly to a lot of people. So Azure that sounds AD connect, super exciting to me. Yeah. Super. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and it actually, it actually is. It actually is. Azure AD connect is really interesting because in the way we are at the moment in Ireland, anyways, um, it's not the same for every country, but in Ireland, because our broadband connection isn't as good, mm -hmm. um, we're still, we're still behind the times and we're looking at a more hybrid model with Azure. So some things in the cloud, some things on premises, some things that might be uh, synced between both, which provides a good solution and a stable solution for companies that cannot afford the cost of going to the cloud and migrating over fully. Yeah. So my passion with Azure AD is the back end side, which is the, the likes of um, where you might have a scenario, a user syncs an account, uh, they create an account in Office 365 or Azure. They create an account in AD Connect, but the accounts in Office 365 have been there since day dot. So they have problems with the unique IDs and immunizable IDs where they're not quite connecting together. So my, my backend uh, knowledge on that is to try and educate people in how to fix those kind of issues and how to make something that's, a very big issue into something a very small issue and showing the i suppose the methods behind it um because not not everyone has that in their hand yeah so what about so what what new what's exciting to you now so uh what what's exciting is my passions are cybersecurity. that's where i've branched out to uh over the last year and a half um I enjoy all things cybersecurity. Um, I'm particularly interested in the SOC Seam solutions. And that's what I'm kind of, uh, I suppose, uh, blue, blue teaming and defending against threats is what I'm looking at. Um, I, over, in the last year or two, I completed my uh, CompTIA CYSA certification. And uh, at night, I'm actually doing my uh, degree in cybersecurity. So, that's that's where I'm headed towards. Um, so anywhere from Azure to cybersecurity are my biggest interests. Not to say that I don't have interest in other things. Um, I've worked on the likes of uh, Windows Server, uh, Windows OS, Hyper-V, uh, Veeam products. Um, I've worked with some soccer theme solutions like Splunk. Um, I have a huge interest obviously in Microsoft Azure. I became an Azure Solutions Architect uh, after two years of intensive training over COVID. So I suppose my interests are predominantly Azure and cybersecurity, but I, I have worked on other platforms and other things and supported other infrastructure. So yeah. Well, there's a lot of room for growth. I mean, in that in that field, I mean, it's one thing that we're you know it, you think of all of the um, the expert like the where we are lacking in in personnel where you know the, we can't hire enough people that have yeah. those certifications and security that are focused on identity and and uh, 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 authentication topics. They're all critical to all the systems uh, that that we work on. So. It's a huge area that's expanding. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you. Yes, um, I suppose zero trust being the buzzword at the moment and technology transformation. Yeah, um, I suppose you need to read read in between those topics and to discover what what they're really about. Um, Microsoft uh, recently, uh, I suppose, 
shouted out to that and created the Cybersecurity Solutions Architect to showcase their uh, an individual's ability uh, on that side of things. And I suppose that's that's where it's headed. And if you want to, you know, work closer with cybersecurity side of things with Microsoft, though that would be one of the certifications to get, and it would be it would be a stellar one to have on your CV, especially. Look, even if you're a student in college and you're starting out um, your degree, as you go along your four years, it it would be recommended to look at Microsoft certification. And, you know, they're, they're ANSI accredited. They count towards your college. And it's a great way to start getting, I suppose, interested in different topics and learning your strengths. Um, Can I also them. add that's a great way to start with the networking and making contacts and the community aspect as well for a lot of those tools. And there's free learning resources that are out there through LinkedIn learning and other sources that are out there as well. But that's, yeah. like I recommend, so I've got a son that's about to uh, graduate from university here in December uh, with a degree in atmospheric sciences. So we, of course, we're in the family, he's weather boy, um, you know, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I, I tried to push him at the beginning of his, of his schooling, like, hey, you should really consider like looking at some of the certifications, things that I, you know, I can get your know, discounts or or potentially free through my profile, but you you get access to a lot of this great data and stuff that's out there in uh, in analytics specifically. And then he started picking up on Power BI. He did a bunch of training courses. And I said, I'm telling you, none of your classmates are doing this or very few of them are going and doing these kinds of cert certificates and things. And he says now that he's almost done, his only regret was not like minoring in that in information uh, uh, analytics and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah, data I, analytics side is, is such a huge space as well. Yeah. I, and it, and it is both from, uh, from a venture neutrality point of view and Microsoft, especially because they, they've launched so many certifications into data, data analyst, data associate, data expert, you know, I mean, they're all there. Um, and it's not just Microsoft, they're there for all providers. So right. well, it's, it's just like your security, security certifications yeah. in, for, in Microsoft stack, again, applicable to other areas as yeah. well. So yeah. having them shows that level of knowledge of the industry, it, it all applies. Uh, it's like my son, you know, he's like, he knows R and Python now. I'm like, okay, those are skills, which you're going to be able to use no matter which direction you're going. Uh, yeah, they're, so they're, they're, they're universal. Have. Yep. Yeah, they're they're universal, Christian, and that is what separates you from the candidate that's sitting next to you, getting getting that uh, getting that job, getting that salary, getting that uh, I suppose getting their dream place to work in. Um, that's what differentiates you against them. Um, one of the biggest things I learned as part of my journey for tech in general was. Um, Microsoft did a brilliant video uh, called Microsoft Certified uh, Certifications. And one of the things that is brought up in it is we, I suppose, we want people that innovate, disrupt, adapt, and create. And that is really important, especially in the industry we're in, in the tech sector. And that's what MVP is kind of like that. You, you, you get involved in the communities and you get, uh, I suppose, you give your technical expertise to others that need it. You help them along the way. You give them, you show them how they can advance their careers. You genuinely help them learn new technologies. And I suppose that's the biggest thing. So innovating, creating, and learning is all part of the career uh, focus for many IT people. And as you said, I, it, it would have been great to go back and do some of those certifications and hindsight's a great thing, but you know, we, we can all look back and say, should have done this, that, and the other, and life just presents its own obstacles. So yeah, yeah. I've got stories down that road. If I had gone down the path and I would have had my doctorate in, uh, it was basically in the, you know, stu the study of collaboration technology on how it changes team culture. That was what I was going to focus on. And yeah, you know, that was 20 years ago. Wow, if I had completed my degree, which would have taken five, six years to complete, 
you know, I would have had 15 years of being an expert on exactly the world we live in now, um, you know, yeah. around collaboration technology. But, well, you know, Matthew, I mean, this is, it, it, it's, uh, you know, love, love your passion. Again, congratulations on the, the new MVP. So uh, I'm sure you'll be sticking around the community for uh, quite some time. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. So folks that want to get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? So LinkedIn, of oh. course. Yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn just by typing in Matthew Brown. Uh, my Twitter handle is Azure Guru Matt. And uh, you can also go to uh, focus-it.ie uh, onto our website if you want to get free learning advice uh, and training. Um, I suppose just just before we finish and stuff, I want to give a shout out to Nick Whitam. He is the CEO of NTS, who has really supported me in my journey for MVP. He is a 12 time MVP awarded individual um, who worked with Microsoft in the past in the small business server team. Mm -hmm. So shout, shout out to Nick, um, shout out to Dan and Frank, uh, Dan Ray and Frank Falvey, who have been very supportive in my journey uh, to get to MVP. And a shout out to Claire, Christian and uh, Lorraine for all their support over the last few months, just with getting Journey to the Cloud up and running fully and getting an audience and, you know, just general support uh, as part of the MVP and MCT communities. So shout out to all of them. And obviously, uh, Claire Smith's who supported me on everything as well. So thank, thank you very much, Chris. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. And hopefully uh, we'll get to uh, meet in person sometime soon. I was just Absolutely. close to your part of the world uh, a few weeks back, but I was over in the UK, but uh, okay. it's been, been a few years since I've been over to Ireland, but we, we, back. we will definitely get there. Um, we, I had Dan Ray, he came over and stayed at the house there a few months back from the US and we had a great time. So we'll, we'll definitely get there. I, I plan to do a bit of traveling obviously in the next year or two and know that everything's calmed down. So uh, I look, we'll, we'll meet up one way or the other question and we'll take a few in-person pictures. All right. All right. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, mind yourself. Thanks Christian, thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs>